Hello everyone, Eric with Burlow's Aquatics, bringing you another top five video here today. Uh, today is going to be a good one, one of my favorite subjects, and that's African cichlids. So sit tight, we'll get right into it. All right, so we're going to dive right in, so to speak, into number one. Number one is going to be, you know, knowing your different species of African cichlid. Now for this for the purpose of this video, I'm only going to talk about Lake Malawi. I'm aware that there are two other lakes, Lake Victoria and Lake Tanganyika, but I'm just going to cover Malawi in this one. So uh, Lake Malawi, you've got your Mbunas. Those are your smaller your smaller fish. Uh, the biggest one, I believe, gets to about five, six, maybe, maybe seven inches. I've had a couple that have gotten close to seven. Um, you've got your Peacocks which are kind of like an arrowhead shape to them. And uh, the majority of them as well, seven inches. I've got a couple in here that are pushing seven inches. And then you've got your haps. Now your haps are gonna be your giants. Uh, they get roughly anywhere from eight to 14 inches. And um, I've got a couple in here now that are pushing nine to 10 inches. So, I mean, there is that, they get big. All right, so number two, we're gonna talk about another important thing and that's tank size. Now, African cichlids, the majority of them get rather large. I mean, we're talking like 10 to 14 inches, I would say. Um, so let's start with your Mbunas. Your Mbunas are gonna stay smaller. Some, I mean, you'll have a couple of them that will get up to six or seven inches, but so tank size for Mbunas, I would say at a minimum, 55 gallons, but honestly, I'd love to see them in more like a 75 Just because it's a little deeper, um, you know front to back um, Peacocks Some of your I mean, they're pretty much around the same sizes of as in Boonas, but some of your peacocks like your lemon jakes and a couple other ones are gonna get You know seven inches maybe a little bit more So uh, for peacocks, I would say start your start off with a 75 but uh, personally, my favorite tank for Africans is the 125, which is what you see behind me. It's got a lot of room. You can put a lot of fish in there, you know, because you do need to put a lot of put a lot of cichlids in in your tank to curb the aggression. But we'll, you know, we'll get to that on another subject later. Um, and then you have your haps. Now your haps are going to be the big ones. You know, they're going to be your heavy hitters. You're going to have you know, your haps are gonna be anywhere from like eight inches to 14 inches. You know, so you're gonna want a pretty decent sized tank. I would say no smaller starting out than a 125, perhaps. If you want them to grow to their full potential and be happy, healthy, and thriving. All right, so number three, we're gonna talk about a little bit about uh, tank setup. What I mean by tank setup is like your decorations, your substrate, your rock work, plants, all that. So we're gonna start with Mbunas because Mbunas are gonna need a lot of rock work in their tank uh, because I mean the word Mbuna translates to rockfish and you know over in Lake Malawi. Um, so yeah, Mbunas are gonna need lots of rock work. I wouldn't put any plants in there with them. They, them having a mostly vegetarian diet, they will they will munch on them. I'm sure there's somebody out there that's had plants with Mbunas with no problem, but me personally, I haven't tried it, so I'm not gonna recommend it to you. Uh, your your peacocks, I mean, you can you can have some rock work in, them as, in there with them as well, but just one thing to keep in mind with peacocks is the more, the more you have in there, the more territory there's gonna be to fight over. So with peacocks, I would keep the rock work scarce. I mean, your your fish are supposed to be the focus point of the tank, anyways. So I I really wouldn't put that much. I mean, you see, you see like right here, I've just got like a small line of rocks in the back, and I have fairly barely any aggression, unless unless one of them goes to breed, which is hardly ever because I got rid of most of my females. But um, anyways, so haps, your haps. I honestly, I'd only put like a couple rocks in there and leave it at that. Because again, your haps are the prettiest ones. You want them to be the focus point of the tank. You don't want somebody to walk in your house 
and be like, oh, gee, look at all the rock work. And then you're thinking to yourself, why don't you look at the fish? So, minimal decoration, perhaps. Uh, just, like I said, you want them to be the focal, focal point of your tank. Number four, we're going to talk a little bit about tank baits. Now, me personally, I don't really put anything with Africans. I do put the uh, Synodontis lace cats with them. They do fairly well. They're from they're from Africa, so they go really they go really well with the Africans. I mean, you can do you could do rainbow fish with them. Just one key thing to remember is if it's small enough to fit in its mouth, it's going to be food. Just keep that in mind. Whatever you put in there with them, make sure it's too big to fit in their mouth. Also, I mean, you can you can do other cichlids i mean i've seen people do parrotfish with them yes i know parrotfish are south american it's a hybrid it's said to be a cross between a, a midas and a severum i still haven't heard any truth to that but that's what seems to be the going consensus right now parrots go good with african cichlids i like i said i know they're south american the rule book will tell you no. I've done it before, no problems. Don't have any in there right now because I moved them over to a South American tank. So that's that. But basically, like I said, you, you want your African cichlids to be the focal point of the tank, so you don't want to put all this other stuff with them just to you know take the focus off of them. All right, last but certainly not least, we're gonna talk about cichlid aggression. Now, this is one of the main things that scares people away from African cichlids is the fact that they're so aggressive. But there's ways to fix it. It won't get rid of it, but you can fix it. You can cut it down quite a bit. And a few things I already covered in previous steps, and that's, num you know, number one, don't have, a lot of don't have a lot of rock work in your tank because the more you have in there, the more they have the claim as their territory. You know, another another good way to curb aggression is to keep them slightly overstocked. When I say overstocked, I mean within reason. Don't go setting up 75 and throwing 100 fish in there. That's, that's not what I'm telling you. So, you know, like, I got this 125. I've got about roughly 30 to 40 fish in there. And as you can see, there's not really any aggression behind me. I mean, they all they all get along pretty well. I had a few issues with a couple fish that I've rehomed to a couple buddies of mine, but um, since they were gone, no, next to no aggression at all. But uh, it's the, one of the most important things, and I can't stress it enough. When you buy African cichlids, you have to be ready for the aggression. You have to be ready to fix it. You know, you have to be ready to if a fish is killing some of your other fish, you have to be ready to rehome that other fish. I'm not telling you to flush it down the toilet or whatever. I mean, but you might have to take it back to the fish store you bought it at. Or if you have a buddy that has an African tank, you might have to try to convince him to take, take the jerk away from you. But, um, just please pay attention to that. And please just know that these fish are aggressive. Don't let them scare you out of the hobby. It's, it's not that bad. Trust me. All right, and that's all I got for you guys today. Um, appreciate y'all watching. Uh, be sure to pay attention because I got more coming. I got lots more, lots more top five videos coming. So I'll catch you on the next one.